Hi, my name is Sean Lindymood, and I'm going to show you how I made this machining blank on this Fabrication on Friday. We're going to do this the old-fashioned way with a microphone off the camera. So I've got a shopping bag here I'm going to lay down for a barrier. So I'm going to work on this plastic bag. In my previous video, I made this leather coaster with this stamp that I had milled out with this being smooth on smooth cast 65 D I'm gonna go over how I made this machining blank and go from there what I had done before was I was trying to make a larger coaster something that would fit my quart size cups so I had cut one of these out to make something large but what I found is using this cutter right here was really violent on the leather this was set to two inch from center so I cut out these four inch circles so four inch seems to be a magic size. This was, uh, I've got a stack of these, so I might wanna try to reuse these, so make a mold that actually goes over it. I really like working with plastics and casting and molding. So what I'm gonna try to do is machine out an original coaster, uh, approximate dimensions of this. So this is four inches on the outside, and I'm gonna put a lip in here. I've liked this one because it's been able to capture the humidity that gets in there. So what I need is a blank that's approximately, I don't know, 0.3 inches thick at minimum from flat so that I don't cut into the wood and so that there's enough space to mill it flat. I'm gonna start with this piece here. This is the piece that I originally cut this leather hole out of. And you can see even in the wood, digging into it. But this was my this was my sample piece for a long time and with this technique I'll be able to not worry about it. I'll pour right over it and it'll become a new machine blank. I'm going to be using tape to do the walls. Last time I used this packing tape it didn't stick really well to the wood. So I'm going to also try the green painters tape. This green painters tape is just a higher stickiness. Uh, like the blue painters tape, the blue painters tape may or may not have a problem sticking to this wood. I'm going above and below. The stuff on the bottom is going to get tucked under, so it's nice and flat. This also provides a little bit of a leak barrier in case something gets by. So if I put liquid in here now, it's going to flow outward because there's no support on these walls. So I'm going to shore these up with some scrap wood and I'm going to start with the flat edge out, radiating out. Then I'm going to clamp these together. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and mark my wall at at least one point where I can see visually how deep that I want to go. So I'm using Smoothcast 65D from SmoothOn. This is a one-to-one -one by volume, so I'm going to mix it into two cups. Then mix it into a third cup. I went up to the line. The instructions for the So Strong actually say put it into the B before mixing A in. That way you can get it thoroughly mixed. There's two reasons I like using this. One, I can see it start to set up, and the other is since these two parts are actually pretty clear, 
they're not very distinct so when you mix them it's hard to tell so I'm going to be uh, tinting one so that I can see it uh, even though this is black it's gonna end up setting up as gray because the 65D cures white. Any color you add, you need to compensate by adding more to get a darker tint. You may or may not actually be able to achieve the tint you want because of that coloring. And I'm mixing with a disposable butter knife. Once I mix this, I have two and a half minutes, which when I look at the clock, I'm gonna give myself two minutes to work with it before it sets up, starts to set up. Uh, I'm, in, I'm wiping off unmixed material off of my knife to mix again. And I'll be pouring it out the side that doesn't have it. I'm going to pour it out the side that doesn't have any. The bubbles are going to rise, which is what I want. See, I just went over my mark. This is going to be sufficient. And I'll zoom in so you can see a time lapse. I'm going to leave it to set up. It's going to go ahead and cure from the center of the mass outward because that's where the heat is being generated and that's where it'll cure the fastest. I was tapping on it to get the small bubbles up out of the mixture. As this particular resin cures, it gets to become kind of a gel-like consistency first before it sets up. This is a rotocast resin that was intended to do slowly throughout the inside of a mold. So it's been 10 to 15 minutes and it's still warm to the touch. The chemical reaction gives off heat. So there you have something you can clamp in your mill, surface off, and use as a plastic machining blank. The top has some bubbles in it. Once that's cleared off, it should be really, really solid. So you can see in here along the sides. And we got an awesome blank here. You can see the marker where I marked it, where the minimum thickness that I wanted to achieve was. And I definitely achieved that. So I call this a success. We'll see, however, once I machine the top off, make sure there's no inclusions down below. So, some lessons learned. The blank that I poured for the video and machine actually had some inclusions in it, so I had small air bubbles in it. So 
uh, this particular stuff is getting a little on the older side, so moisture gets in there and sometimes creates havoc with a little bit of uh, bubbles. To correct that, I could put this in a pressure pot. What the bubbles do at that point is they get so small they disperse into the liquid and they just make such a more solid blank. So if you happen to have the opportunity to do that, this is my pot right here. It's a two and a half gallon paint pot with the pickup tube pulled out of it. This particular one's a Grizzly. You can do this without a pressure pot, but you're just gonna have to be more careful about keeping your materials in a fresh state. Not old and kept to the right temperatures. The bubbles I have in that one may be incidental, maybe it is the way I mixed it this time or something along those lines. But this first casting that I did where I was able to cut this emblem out of it turned out incredibly well. There's no inclusions in that and I could not be happier with this one. The bubbles in that one actually transferred into the mold and subsequent copies and you can actually tell every little detail including the machine marks and the small dots where the bubbles are and it turned out okay and usable but I'm going to end up machining it again and there was some small details that when enlarged to that size I wanted to go touch up so that's one of the reasons why I'm going to recut that. So if you learned anything give me a thumbs up. If you like this video give me a thumbs up. If you have any tips, tricks, write them down in the comments. If there's anything you do differently, tell me. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer as best I can. And then we'll see you next Fabrication Friday.